Can you do the same thing with Kendall, where Kendall is for young, being really young among the runners? Well, I don't know. They had a lot of good ones. Um, you can go way, way back before my time, but even then you had uh, Terry Miller and you had Ernest Anderson. You've had David Thompson. You've had Barry. You've had Thurman. You've had pro players lately. You've had Tatum Bell. You've had Marinci. Uh, you had uh, Dantrell Savage. Uh, boy, I, don't, I mean, we've had a lot of them. We've been lucky. Um, it sure make it easy to to uh, to move the ball on offense when you can make people miss. Talk a little bit about Keith Tostin and the compliment he kind of gives because he's a different he's different. Than you. Yeah, and I really haven't figured out what that is, Robert. But uh, he runs different. Um, Keith brings some maturity to us. Uh, he's uh, he understands the offense. He understands defensive adjustments. He gives us a, a different side, and, and we would love for, for Keith and, and Bo to get 10 or 12 carries a game and, and a Kendall to carry at 20 uh, to try to keep them all fresh. But we, we have a nice mix going there, uh, and it's, it's, it's an extra benefit when you know you've got three guys that you can put in there that you, that you can trust that understand what's going on on offense. You don't have to be as protective with one or the other. He looks faster now than he did two years ago. Yeah, you know, and uh, at first I I thought, well, maybe it's maybe the other teams weren't as fast, but Houston's pretty fast. They can run, and um, he did a nice job of of you know Keith is not a a, a slasher, and he's not a uh, a guy that makes you miss and just freezes you like Kendall does. Mm-hmm. He he kind of turns sideways and runs almost like a 200 400 meter guy that runs fast around the track. He does a nice job of that, and uh, he's gotten better. Uh, hes I don't think he's completely healthy, but uh, he's really gotten better each week. Is he a pretty popular, well-liked? His teammates describe him as being a pretty fun guy. Yeah, Keith is, a, uh, Keith is a ladies' man. He, he's, uh, he's always got uh, something going on, uh, keeps good company, and uh, – He's very well liked because he's got a good personality and uh, the players like him. Uh, Coach, you talked a little bit about the stadium. How much louder was it with the involvement? I thought it was pretty loud. Uh, and again, it's hard for me to, to really gauge that uh, because I don't, I, I hear it at the start or maybe. It, at an intermission if, if it comes back from a timeout and it needs to be really loud. But during the game, I don't hear that much unless it's offensively and we can't function. I can hear that. And, we, and that you don't hear in this stadium. But when it started, I could hear it, and I thought it was pretty loud. Was there a uh, – I don't know, when you guys were out before the game started doing warm-ups, everybody wasn't in their seats. But when you guys came out to run on the field just before kickoff, was there a uh, – <laughs> Was there a, a wow moment when you and everybody else kind of looked in and, and saw that West End zone and thought, whoa, this is, this is neat? When we walked out, for whatever reason, it was one of the first things that, that I looked at. And I just didn't image it looking full like it did because I guess I'd heard so much skepticism that we're building this West End zone and there's not going to be anybody in there. And, I mean, I've never really concerned myself with it, but I just looked at it and that's the first thing that came to my mind. And... It looked full to me, and then I obviously got on with the game and didn't pay attention to it. Uh, you know, Holder's a pretty good businessman. I didn't know if he had painted orange people and put them in the bleachers or <laughs> what, you know, to make it look good. But uh, uh, I thought it looked really good. And uh, Kristen and I went and went out to the tailgaters after a game like we always do, and there's uh, some people that have been coming to games here forever that we met, and they felt the same way. And then we went to eat at uh, Shortcakes at midnight, and the students were in there and some other Oklahoma State fans, and they felt the same way. They would say, hey, it looked full, you know. And, of course, I don't really pay that close attention to it. But that obviously is, is a good image to – it's a good image for the people to think, hey, we came to a game and we have this new stadium and it's full. Would it surprise you I, – I had three different players voluntarily come up and say when they were coming out for the start of the game, when you open that gate or whatever it is they do down there, so when they looked at it then and could see the, really the whole thing, had tears in their eyes. I would think that uh, the Oklahoma State people that have been around here a long time would, would have a, a, some emotions uh, about what's going on around here. players that had tears in their eyes. Yeah, and, and I think that part of that is because uh, they've, they've 
seen dirt and steel and mud and uh, concrete here for four years. That's all we've ever seen. Uh, I've gotten so accustomed to it that, that uh, I don't even drive down the street anymore. I just go around because I'm not even used to the street being open. I have to remember I can cut across when I come to work. So I, I guess what I'm saying is, is I think everybody is just, it's gone on for so long that people, uh, I mean, I don't think anybody realized it was ever going to get complete or be completed, I should say. Mike, according to the ticket manager, there were 15,000 empty seats here, sir. Yeah. Is that I mean, well, I think we need to fire the ticket manager, to be honest with you. I think he could have pulled off 55 if he had just said it. <laughs> I agree. That's yeah, I mean, they always blow it out of proportion. I was, I was thinking 55, and they came out with 45. Do you know um, where those empty seats are? Do you have any idea where? You know, you know that's been a I, – I didn't want to bring that up. Uh, it's kind of like officials, you know. You, you're not supposed to talk about it. But that was a topic. Uh, several guys had said, how, how was there only 45,000 people? I, said, I, I don't know. I guess there was 15,000 empty seats somewhere. Mike, you've been for years. You've been selling, you know, blueprints and piecemeal construction one piece at a time. Now to recruits with the almost finished product, how much more can you get to recruits to sell? Hey, our new facility here. We had, uh, uh, I think it's legal for me to say, we had prospects at the game like we always do, and some of them were from high school, and some of them were from beyond that. And I know that they had commented that that uh, it was pretty, that it was big time. And so uh, that's where that's what you're trying to hit home with. I mean, you're trying to you're doing this for the players, so they'll have tremendous facilities, and then you're also doing it to enhance your recruiting. And uh, in December and January, when we have official visits, I think this year will be the first time we're able to walk them through, and they'll they'll actually be able to see what's going on and see the size of all the facilities we have. And we've walked them through there, and it's just been a, a huge area. But now you have the walls up and I'm guessing at that time they'll be you know topping out plumbing work doing crown molding and all the features to where you can at least see what's going on and what it's going to look like and I think it should uh, should help us this will be really the first class that we've ever had been able to recruit to the building